So here's the start of my first batch. It's all virgin uh, oil. We've got some grapeseed oil that was left over from a cut that we got back from a customer that they didn't want. Uh, there's some coconut oil, palm kernel, palm kernel. The palm kernel and the coconut are a little harder. That's what you know this bucket shaped stuff is. And then I've got some grapeseed oil to the two buckets of grapeseed oil in there already. So the drum heater is good to go once you got liquid in there. Just a warning, don't turn the drum heater on until you got liquid in there because it will get freaking hot and your insulation on the outside will start smoking. So uh, just a, a note to uh, keep that in mind. So here we are, the barrel's close to full, and that's a bunch of palm kernel oil, coconut oil, grapeseed oil, what else have we got in there? All of pomace oil, so it's all virgin oil, there's no used oil in here, it's easiest to do a batch on brand new oil, so we're going to fry this up soon. Okay, so here's our methanol. Uh, for those that don't know, and I had to look this up myself, methanol and methyl hydrate, which is what you get from, this one came from Rona. Uh, you can also get it at uh, Walmart, but Walmart only has a one liter. This is a 3.78 liter. Uh, you can get it at most hardware stores. And this at Rona was $8.99 a bottle. I can't remember what the price was of the methanol. I got that through work. but. Uh, that adds up so it's 21% uh, methanol for the, the oil that's going into the mix but did get some other cool things got this uh, Nordic timer it's a TH868C I got that from uh, Rona as well and that's what it looks like right here but the neat thing about it is as well as being a typical seven day timer that's got a plug out on this side and a plug out lead on that side it has a countdown timer so you can set a countdown timer to run an appliance for a certain time so in this case I'm gonna run the pump on this uh, timer for three hours and then it's gonna shut off the pump and uh, then I don't have to come back here and shut off the pump once it's mixing the other cool thing uh, I got is this uh, energy meter I think it was about 29 bucks the timer by the way was uh, I think 18 or 19 dollars and there's another brand that looked totally identical, all the same features for $32. It was a Woods brand, so make sure you get that, uh, that brand that I showed you there. This uh, little meter here shows you uh, your watt consumption, which is uh, right there, 655 watts. That's the band heater on the, the drum. Uh, well, actually, no, sorry, 697. And we're at 0.36 kilowatt hours since I plugged it in, but I've only had it hooked in there since this was 120 degrees Fahrenheit and now it's 125. I picked up this thermometer at uh, good old Walmart for 20 bucks digital cooking thermometer. It also has a temperature alert on there. Whoops! The magnet's not very strong so you can't really use it for sticking on much of anything. Ah! Bugger! It's got two magnets on the back. Well anyway uh, the temperature probe, you can just shove it in here under the insulation and uh, shows you where the temperature is at. Or you can get a handheld thermometer or whatever. But uh, you want to make sure that your oil is at 130 degrees before you pipe it into the, the mixing unit. Anyway, and then I got lucky. I had this uh, sump pump here. I got that working again. It was kind of seized up a little bit, but seems to be working fine. A bunch of hose, so that's how I'm going to transfer it from the barrel into the big tank and then we're going to see on the side of the tank here how many gallons we've got and we're going to put the methanol in here once we know how many gallons of oil we have and it's uh, because this is a virgin oil it's a standard ratio that's going in there so it's 21 percent methanol for your total volume 
and we're going to go with uh, 7.5 grams of KOH, potassium hydroxide. So we'll scale that off later and uh, show you how that works. So I put this uh, strainer basket in here. It's a stainless, stainless basket. It barely fits through the hole. I had to squish it a little bit. But what happens is you can fill up the methanol inside here and when you drop your KOH or sodium hydroxide pellets, they'll sit in the bottom of that and it, it'll be pumping the methanol through here, through the pump, and as that dissolves it won't clog your pump or cause you any, any grief so uh, the basket in here prevents any chunks from going down into the pump. So we're going to get started soon on scaling our KOH and getting it into methanol. You want to get yourself some good thick these are nitro based gloves. You can't use latex. Latex won't stand up to uh, methoxide. You need a really sensitive scale to measure your KOH powder and we'll go through that in a sec. And when you're putting the methanol in you need one of these OVP 95 organic vapor masks. Don't use a regular dust mask or you're going to damage your brain when you're making the methoxide. And you need some good eye protection as well. So don't fool around with the safety stuff. You have to really watch that. Here we have the potassium hydroxide flakes. It's a 25 kg bag. It is high hygroscopic so it will absorb water. Uh, once you open this bag it's a good idea to stick it in an empty bucket that's clean and keep the lid on it nice and tight because you don't want water to come into this stuff. Okay. Now we got our mask on and we got our safety glasses on. We don't need gloves for this part. But we're going to pour the methanol into the processing vessel. That's the best way to just let it drain down and you won't get it vapors everywhere. And wait till that's empty. Okay, now we've got the 16 liter empty. Now we're going to add five of these 3.78 liter jugs. We need about 40 liters total. Quite a lot of methanol. And we're going to scale our KOH in a few minutes here after we get the oil into the processor. We'll just put the lid on there to keep it from evaporating. Okay, we've got our transfer pump in the barrel. What we had a bit of difficulty with. It's an old clapped out pump. Hopefully it keeps up and Fills this all the way in without dying because I sure hate to use a bucket or something to get that in there. Anyhow, once we got all the oil in there, we'll be able to see on the side here where the level's at and how much chemicals we need to add or if we need to add any more methanol. We've got this much methanol in here, which is uh, about 11 gallons. So we'll see how much oil we've got. And it's slowly filling up. Takes a bit of time, it's not a fast pump. We're getting there, it's Almost halfway down the barrel, and we're at uh, 23 and a bit gallons.
Now we're at 45 gallons and getting close to the bottom. I'm going to have to turn the pump sideways to get a little bit more out. But the highest we can go is about 48 and then we're going to add 11 which is going to give us 59 total up here and that's pretty much going to be the max. Okay so we're at 49 gallons and we're going to scale out the KOH now. Okay there's the KOH flakes. So our scale and we need another 390 grams so we're going to scale that off now. There's a bit of dust from this stuff. So you really want to have your mask on. Okay, 359.3, that's good. It's dangerous stuff. Wear your gloves. Seal that up. It does boil a bit when it's dissolving, but it dissolves pretty fast. And we can wash that up. And now we're going to pull out our other pump. Make sure the lid's sealed tight. We're going to open the top one here. Leave that one closed. That one's closed, and all these are closed, and we're going to open up the bottom one, fill up the pump, turn on our pump. So that's circulating the methoxide liquid. Once we get a good mix on that, Take a look here quick. There's some good fumes coming out of there. You always want to leave that nice and tight shot. It's going to change color. We're going to let that mix for a minute or two and then we're going to go into the big one here. We're going to fill it up into there. The methoxide is a little bit warm. We're now filling only a little bit back into here and the rest of it is going into the big tank. You can see the it's sitting on top mostly. Hopefully if we're lucky our silicone seal here works well. That's going to fill up our tank right to the top. Okay. That's pretty much it. We got the big tank fill up. We're going to shut this valve now and open the big tank. That's going to take our oil and mix it with the methoxide. It's working away really well there. Not sure if you can see that, but it's coming down into there. So much for the silicone, it's leaking a little bit, but not too bad. It's the max capacity of this thing. Right up to the top there. 
so it's mixing away. Uh, I took some of the liquid out of the big one and put it in the small one. They're both mixing away fairly equally here, so just gonna watch it for a while. And unfortunately, it's it's not a true through hull fitting here. It's something I made up, so it's kind of ugly right now. Wait till that silicone dries in about half an hour, 45 minutes, and then I can dump all of that liquid into the big tank again and have it settle out for uh, one to two days and see where it's at. So I reset the timer, one hour, 32 minutes left. And got some ugly silicone scab on there and that seems to be not leaking and the level's up here, so that's good. There's nothing in the small one. So I've opted to go for four hours total mix because it's pretty damn full tank and we're not getting any kind of aeration up here from the nozzle, so it's getting a decent mix, but uh, better safe than sorry. They say one to four hours usually to mix it up. And once that shuts off, I'll take a look at it again tonight to see if we're getting any separation on the oil. <laughs> 